Bobby, you here again? Yeah, my doctor told me to reduce stress at work, so I come to Buffalo Wild Wings to eat lunch and watch sports. I get to pick one of seven entrees, like sandwiches and salads, plus one of seven sides. Oh, I like sides. It's so affordable, I can finally take a vacation. Where are you going to go? Here, Tim, here. Introducing the new B-Dubs Fast Break Lunch Menu, starting at a new low price. Dine-in or order takeout weekdays between 11 and 2. Participation and availability may vary. Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to another episode of The Grueling Truth. I'm your host, Mike Goodpaster. We were supposed to have Todd Stussy on tonight. I talked to Todd about an hour ago. His NFL Draft app is actually going to be available on the iTunes store in the morning. He's got a flight he's got to catch to St. Louis because it was kind of a last-minute thing when it was coming out. Um, I have beta tested it. It's a great app. Mr. Stussy will be here Monday night at 11 p.m. Eastern time to talk about it. Uh, the site is called or the, the site's called Scout Site. It will be available, like I said, tomorrow. Um, I'll tweet about it when it comes out. I'll give a review. I mean, it's really great, especially when you're getting down to where you might be in a fifth or sixth round, and say you're Matt, and since your 49ers weren't very good last year. You'll want to go ahead and hope that they're really going to improve. So when they pick somebody from a Division three school with Jim Tom Sula as the head coach, you can look on oh, and, and right then instantly know that a 500 season is pretty much lost. But it, it's a lot better than just listening to what ESPN tells you. It's a lot more in-depth, especially when you get into the later rounds. And it's really a great app. I mean, it's a great thing to have. If you're at a draft party and you're all picking everything, you have a little bit more knowledge. You know, they do cumulative statistics on each player. They rank each player. You can go in there and you can see that Melvin Gordon had the most fumbles out of all NFL running backs, or all running backs in the NFL draft was six. Um, so we decided we had to circle the wagons. We've got everybody here tonight. We're going to talk the top ten teams of the Super Bowl era. We brought in my boxing co-host, Joe Rodriguez. Hey, Mike. Hey, Matt. And Joe, we brought in, you. of course, and we brought in, of course, as always, that 49er fan, Matt Andrew Scavage. Very proud of it, Mike. Always good to be here, and uh, looking forward to the show tonight. we got a great show for everybody. Well, we got a top ten with the Giants and a 49ers fan and a Bengals fan, so I'm probably the only one that will not have a team listed in this top ten. So That's kind of hurt. Not really. It's all right. I mean, you, you learn to deal with it. And I know that they had this thing on Facebook where you could go in and they would tell you what kind of husband you would be by what team you cheered for. And my wife was messing with it and punched it in said that I was a Cincinnati Bengals fan, and they came back saying I was actually the perfect match for any woman because I was loyal to a fault. Yeah, no, I'm loyal to a fault. You know, you don't have to give me a nice ring to get me to get married, so there's no expense there. (laughs) But So, I mean, really, I don't expect a lot, but I will be loyal to you no matter what you do to me. So, I don't know what it says about 49ers fans, but I don't think it was good. Well, I wouldn't expect it. To, I wouldn't expect you to give me any good news about that. Well, I mean, it's just the way it is. I mean, when your team, I'm not going to bring up the salary cap thing anymore. We're going to go top ten since Joe is my boxing co-host every Tuesday night. We're going to let him go first. Top ten Super Bowl champions. We're talking about, right? Well, Super Bowl, Super Bowl era teams. It could be a team that didn't win a championship. Ah, you see, that's you know, you throw oh, me purple. Definitely. All right, I'll, I'll start anyway. the Super Bowl winners. Me too. I but like to keep everybody good. on their toes. It's more fun. My number 10 team are the 66 Packers. Uh, they were in the middle of their uh, three in a row. That was a tremendous team. Uh, 
that uh, that team had a bunch of Hall of Famers. They had an all-time underrated quarterback in Bart Starr, big-time money player, tremendous defense, and they dominated a very, very good Chiefs team in the Super Bowl and also beat a uh, tremendous uh, Cowboys team in a great uh, NFL championship game. Yeah, the 66 yeah, that NFL was, championship game was a better game than the 67. And I'm going to go ahead and go now because I'm just going to say I actually have the 66 Packers at number 10 also. So Joe's right on this one. What do you got, Matt? I have the 99 Rams. Uh, the reason I picked the 99 Rams uh, basically uh, is pretty much a, a record uh, offense at the time. Um 99 Rams were number one in scoring, number one, number four in points allowed. They had the number one point differential. Uh, Kurt Warner, first guy to throw 40 touchdowns uh, since Dan Marino in 86. And the defense, I believe they had like seven or eight uh, defensive touchdowns. And Dick Vermeil, very fine coach, good playoff run, being an excellent uh, Tampa Bay team. Uh, that was a very, very t- tough out. The Vikings were, were a, a very good uh offensive team, and then uh, one of the better Super Bowls um, of the last uh, 20 years, beating the Titans. Uh, I felt this was a team deserving of the top ten. All right. Joe, do you want to tell him he's nuts, or do you agree with him? No, listen, he's not picking the, uh, you know, the uh, the Broncos, the 77 Broncos. So, no, that, that's, a, <laughs> that's a good pick. <laughs> as far as as far as the Packers go in '66, um, you know, like you said, that championship game, Bart Starr throws four touchdowns. Uh, I had if, if we were talking about, uh, I would have included the '62 Packers as as a, a top ten team. The '66 was good. I felt they had dropped off in the run game. Jim Taylor was slowing down, but they were still uh, quite outstanding. I believe they had a number one defense again. And like you said, they beat well, and the thing is, they went to Dallas and beat a really good Dallas Cowboys team. And that Kansas right. City team, three years later, was a team that has to merit consideration into this list also. Plus, you had Vince Lombardi, who was one of the top two or three coaches in NFL history. And even though they were a little bit older, there were still a lot of Hall of Fame players on that team. You had a great offensive line, Forrest Gregg, Fuzzy Thurston, guys like that, so... I, I think that it's hard to ignore. you, you got to have at least one Packer team in there. Yeah, that's fair enough. That, uh, that, that's a big reason why I picked that Packer team. Um, that Dallas team they beat in 66 was a tremendous team, a tremendous team, arguably better than the Packers. But uh, the Packers overcame, uh, overcame Dallas, as Mike mentioned, in Dallas in a great, great game. Well, my number nine, I agreed with Matt's number ten, only I moved him up one spot. I got the 99 Rams at number nine. So I and might have had him at ten. Huh? <laughs> you had him at ten, I had him at nine. Right. Mike, you're so wrong. Is that all right? Okay. Uh, so, Matt, so. you were wrong, Matt but that's all right. We'll go on. What's your number nine, Matt? <laughs> I have the 86 Giants. Uh, oh. MVP of the league, uh, Lawrence. And I know I don't know what I'm going to get here from uh, <laughs> from our guest today, but uh, 86 Giants, uh, you know, with the uh, MVP of the league, Lawrence Taylor, you know, Phil Sims, Joe Morris, I believe had his best year with uh, something like 1,500 yards. I think he even had 21 touchdowns. Mark Bavaro, and that defense was just absolutely lights out. Bill Parcells, the number eight offense in the league number two defense, but also number two point differential. One of the best teams I've ever seen, uh, even though they did have their problems on offense. Joe, do you well, want to disagree um, with them? I do disagree, but my Giants are higher on the list, so when I get to them, I'll explain why I think they should be. All right. What's your number nine, then? My, okay. num- my number nine team are the 69 Chiefs. Uh, Mike just wrote an article about how overlooked this team is, historically speaking. This was a great team with no flaws. This was a complete team who could run the ball, who could pass the ball, 
and the defense was as nasty and as devastating as uh, arguably any defense in NFL history. They were tremendous. And ahead of their time, they had uh, the great Curly Culp uh, in def- on defensive line along with Buck Buchanan. That they had two of the greatest linebackers who ever who ever played the game, and Willie Lanier and Bobby Bell, and they had the great Emmett Thomas, who's a Hall of Famer, and as uh, J- uh, Mike so astutely pointed out, they had Johnny Robinson, the other corner, who was a very underrated corner. Tremendous team. Hey, did you just call me a bad word? Because I don't know. I'm from Indiana. I don't know what astute means, but. <laughs> oh, another thing about the 69 Chiefs, they beat the defending champion Jets at Shea, shut them down, no touchdowns, held them to two field goals, and they went to um, Oakland and beat beat the Raiders after they had lost to them twice during the regular season. So that was really a great team. Yeah, and their only losses that year, I mean, I've got them a lot higher than that, but their only losses that year were to the Bengals by five, had to get a plug for the Bengals. That's when Greg Cook went on his run at the start of the season, played lights out until, of course, with Bengal luck, he got hurt, and that was it. Um, so, yeah, I think the Chiefs, I mean, you got a Hall of Fame coach, you got a Hall of Fame quarterback, you got five or six Hall of Fame defensive players. I mean, it's hard to argue with them being in the top ten. So, number eight, I've got the 86 Giants. I just what's your I, reasoning they on had that? no huh what's your reasoning for having them in your top ten and then uh, whether and where and why you put them there? The At reason eight. I put them in my top ten is this: I believe that their defense was better than the eighty five bears defense, and their offense was not led by an older running back and a very easily breakable quarterback who you know had a tendency to force balls into places i mean it's really hard to come up with a better Super Bowl performance than Phil Simms' 22 for 25 against Denver. And that Denver team, actually defensively, was not too bad. And if you look at their playoff run, they totally shut down and dominated the 86, or the 86 Redskins. I mean, it, I think they played the 49ers that year, too, didn't they? Oh, they, and they crushed us. They put Joe Montana out of the game, and it was just it was a beating. It was one of our down years, and they just took it to us. Yeah, a down year, you make the playoffs and you get beat. All right. Um, you've had 20 no, that was years one since of the, then. No. All right. See, well, you, that's all right. You, as you'll see, I can't ever explain myself. <laughs> no, because there's no explanation for being a 49ers fan. All right. What's your number eight, Matt? Uh, I have the 94 Niners at number eight. Uh, Hall of Fame quarterback Steve Young, Hall of Fame uh, wide receiver Rice, you got Dion in the Hall of Fame, Ricky Jackson's in the Hall of Fame, uh, Richard Dent's in the Hall of Fame, though he didn't play very long <clears throat> on that team. But a lot of great, great players on that team, brought in a lot of free agents, uh, had a really good, at the time, uh, putting up over 500 points at that point. Uh, not many teams had done that, uh, number, led the league in scoring, and you know finally got past a really good Dallas team that really could have went on and, and three-peated and uh, went on to win the Super Bowl. I realize it was against San Diego Chargers, but just taking in the overall picture, it was a really good football team. Uh, I don't have them in my top ten. so that's Neither do I. And, and it's not that Matt. they shouldn't be. It's just the fact that it's kind of like our wide receiver discussion last night. You take the top 20, you throw them in a hat, you can make an argument for every one of them. And actually, funny, when we Mike, talked you earlier, three hours ago. I, I, if you'll if you let me finish, I'll explain that. When we talked earlier, I had actually forgotten about the '86 Giants and the '99 Rams because we did this kind of quick because Todd had just got a hold of me at like ten o'clock. We did discuss earlier doing it next Monday night, so I hadn't really. I had basically just off the top of my head wrote down the teams that I thought would be there. And then in the last half hour, I studied a little bit more. That's why I changed it. And I have no argument against them being in the top ten. Put it like that. That's cool. As long as I'm not crazy. (laughs) My number eight. You're crazy all the time. But, go ahead. My my number eight team were the 71 Cowboys. That was a dominating team in the playoffs against, um, against Detroit they gave up three points, 
against a really good Niner team in San Francisco. They gave up 10 points, and in the Super Bowl, they only gave up three points. That was a dominating, dominating team. I would like to disagree. They had no weaknesses. They, they shut out Detroit that year. That was the 5 nothing. Oh, game, that's though. right. That's right, 5 nothing. You're right. I thought it was 5 uh, That was five the nothing. 70. Was... That was the 70 oh, 71. season. Yeah, it sure? was the 70 playoff game when they shut out the Lions 5 to nothing. Yeah. Ah, so yeah, they, the 71 championship game was 14 to 3 over the Niners. Yeah. Still a great team. Right, you're right. I'm confused with two team. teams. All of America is hearing me being confused, but the 71 team was tremendous. The the performance they put on against uh, the Dolphins in the Super Bowl and in the Niners in the championship game, 3 points and 3 points back to back. Roger Staubach took over at quarterback. They could run the ball. They had a dominating defense. Bob Lilly is an all-time great. That was a tremendous team. And I hated their guts being a Giant fan. They beat the Giants like a drum for 10 years. So, uh, well, but I, I, respect I don't them. have them in my I don't have them in my top 10, but it's kind of the same thing. I mean, it's just all these teams are so tight. You got to make a determination right. on something or another. So, my that number was seven with or my the, 77 team, but go ahead. Yeah, I think the 77 team was better than the 71 team. Yeah, I, I, I mean, like Dorsett a little Tony bit Dorsett. better, Stalback. Yeah, Stalback was better. I mean, he was the starter the whole year then. But we'll get to that. So My number seven was the 89 San Francisco 49ers. If you look at them in the playoffs, I mean, they were as dominant as any team's ever been in a playoff run. What was the Super Bowl was 55-10. to 10. The a- NFC Championship game, they beat the Rams, I think, 33-3. to 3, And that was a Rams team that beat them in San Francisco earlier in the season and almost beat them in L.A. later on in the season. Their defense right. was – they had a great pass rush. You know, they had Charles Haley on that team, I think, didn't they? No, wait, that yep. wouldn't have been Haley. Yeah, it was Haley. Okay. Yeah, they had Haley. But – I mean, it was just, it was a dominant team offensively and defensively, and I think that it was probably Montana. 89 was probably Montana's most dominant year, don't you think, with Rice? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a toss between that and his 84 season, but had he not missed games, he would have had probably uh, in the mid to late 30s in touchdowns. Yeah, and they were he still, still winning with the back ups, too, weren't they? So Yeah. But what do you got, Joe? For my number seven team, I have the '86 Giants. Uh, they, they, their defense was as great a defense I've ever seen. They have uh, arguably the greatest defensive player of all time in Lawrence Taylor. But that team just bludgeoned teams. They were, um, they lost. Uh, what was their last loss? It was against Seattle. That 17-12 loss to Seattle early in the season. Seattle, and then yeah. they ran the table for the rest of the season. The their playoff run wasn't even close. Uh, sorry, uh, Matt. They they blitzed the Niners in the divisional oh. playoff, and they shut so, off. Did they we shut talk about Redskins. that game one more time? <laughs> uh, they blitzed the Niners in the divisional playoff. Um, yeah, I, I'm, Matt seems like a nice guy. Uh, the Giants have had uh, good success against the Niners, uh, so I won't I won't bring that up. Well, I mean, just got to say, Joe, the Giants owned the Niners back then. Uh, no, it went back and forth. Although the last there was few, a time 90, 90 and 2011, the Giants, two of the greatest victories were at the Candlestick. Um, sorry, Matt, bad memories. But back you to want the to talk about Giants. the uh, 2002 wild card game? <laughs> Let's go back to the 86 Giants. <laughs> yeah, that one, that, that still bothers me, Matt. Thank you very much. That could be another show. No problem. Games that well, still Matt bother you. Well, you lost yeah, that that's game, the Joe. top ten games that bother us. <laughs> yeah, that could be a three-hour show. Um, but uh, also the Giants, the Giants shut out a very good Redskin team, and uh, they only had a little hiccup against the Broncos and then just re- steamrolled them in the second half of the Super Bowl. That was a great team. No, no weaknesses. Well, Matt. What number are we on here? Seven? Seven. Okay. Yeah. I have the nineteen seventy six Oakland Raiders. Thirteen and one. I believe Ken Stabler was the league MVP. I could be wrong on that. Um their only loss was to the New England Patriots, which was I think like an eleven and three team. And yeah. the playoff run was now the I believe they had a called go their way 
you know, the uh, yeah against the Patriots. Uh, they had the a Raider bunch fans of like to comp- game go their way. Right, the Raider fans like to complain about the tuck rule, but they forget that '76 playoff game against the Patriots. That was kind of payback, but that was a tremendous team. You, you had uh, the one of the greatest offensive lines, if not the greatest uh, total offensive line. They were number four in scoring, and uh, you know, they get to the Super Bowl, and it was a dominating performance over really a very good Minnesota Viking team with Fran Tarkenton, Chuck Foreman, and those guys. And they had really everything. They had a good run game. They had a really good defense, a lot of really good uh, hitters like Otis Sistrunk and uh, really good team. Uh, 13-1, and I mean, that's definitely worthy of top ten. Well, I don't have Stable much one time. D. Stabler won the uh, MVP in 74. Okay, so he didn't Believe get it in 76. 76, Burt Jones won the MVP. That's right, Burt Jones. I didn't know, well, I didn't I know it off the top of my head. I just looked it up. <laughs> I, I'm not a huge Ken Stabler fan. Guys that throw more picks than touchdowns usually don't impress me too much. I don't think the running game was that great. I mean... I, I just think in the long run, I think if the Steelers don't have the injuries they had, that Pittsburgh Steelers team in 1976 would probably ended up being my number one team because it was the most dominant defense I've ever seen. I mean, they had four or five shutouts that year, a couple other games where they hold teams to three. Mike Kruzak played quarterback through the middle part of the season, beat my Bengals 7-3 and three to win the division. But that's one of those ten games, too, that bother me most. But... But I do think they were a great team. Like I said before, not much separating them. Joe? Um, I already gave you my number seven. We're up to number six now. Number six, yeah. So you want me to go with number six? Yeah. 85 Bears uh, for one season, as dominant a team as I ever saw. Uh, Great, great defense. I think they kind of had a bit of Mike Tyson going for them. I think a lot of teams were really afraid of them. With that, uh, with that 46 defense and that blitzing from all angles, I really think teams were very intimidated by them, but they used it to their advantage, and they were a dominating team. They had a great offensive line that people don't talk about a lot, but that team could run at will. They had average receivers and an average quarterback. With that line and that defense, they still dominated. I think the Mike Tyson analogy is actually a great analogy. I mean, my problem is the wide receivers weren't great. The quarterback wasn't great. I mean, they had some weaknesses. I don't have them in my top ten, which people are going to say I'm nuts. Because, but people say I'm nuts all the time. And the big <laughs> thing to me about them is you had a Giants team that they beat 21 nothing in 85 that was probably a year away from being good enough to beat them. You played a Rams team that was one-dimensional, couldn't throw the ball. Uh, we had Gary Jeter on the show who told us about Dieter Brock being hurt. I mean, they couldn't throw a pass past five yards. And then they played the New England Patriots with Tony Eason, who Tony Eason was scared to death. So, I mean, I don't dispute that they were a great team, but I think a lot of their greatness, if you look at them, their DBs were not that great. They had a great front seven, but they ran a scheme that nobody had ever seen, and it took a year or two for people to catch up to it. Once they did, they beat it like a drum. You know, you get well, two years fast season. forward to that, and San Francisco destroyed it. Yeah, but for one season, that's why I said for one season, they were as dominated a team as I've seen. Well, I think the 86 Giants were better. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, I uh, <clears throat> I have, uh, I actually lowered my uh, 80, 85 Bears. Uh, I, I did some research, but I'll get to that in a little bit there. But my number six is I've got the 89 49ers. Um, I, you know, during the season, they won a lot of close games. Sometimes they needed Steve Young, but they still had a lot of talent. Uh, you know, Roger Craig, Jerry Rice, John Taylor, and the defense. And then, like Mike had talked about, that, that run uh, beating Minnesota, the Rams, and then the Broncos. Broncos had the number one defense in the league that year, and they shredded them as good of a uh, playoff run as I've ever seen. Well, my number six is the Super Bowl four, be the 69 Kansas City Chiefs. Um, I think Joe pretty much covered everything on that one. Ooh, Joe just dropped off the line. You must have made him mad, man. 
Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> well, we only got a couple minutes of. Uh, of yeah, uh, we're good. But sixty nine anyway, Chiefs, so. Joe pretty much said everything that needed to be said about them. And I mean, you're looking at seven or eight Hall of Famers, Hall of Fame coach, dominant defense. Their playoff run defensively was impre- as impressive, if not more impressive, than the '85 Bears, just because of the people they shut down. But yeah, so I, the, we'll move on. the '69 Chiefs. I really enjoyed your, your article, by the way. Um, they they were really great from top to bottom. They I probably had them at well, number eleven. Probably could have moved them in, but like you said, you know, these teams are so tight, it's hard to. All right here, we got a caller on in. the line. We got we got a caller on the line. Welcome, caller. Did you did did Matt make you mad and you had to hang up or what? No, it's me. I got disconnected and I had to call back in. <laughs> yeah. So I'm 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 your. You co-host made me mad. And I just disconnected you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it works. It makes the ratings look better. But it does. <laughs> uh, my number five, I've got the Super Bowl 13, 78, 1978 Pittsburgh Steelers. I, I debated with this because I think the 76 team, the Super Bowl 10 team, had a lot better defense. But the Super Bowl 13 defense or offense was, I mean, you had one of the greatest offensive lines in history. You had Rocky Blyer, Franco Harris, one of the best combinations in history. You had Terry Bradshaw, who was a great big game quarterback. Chuck Knoll, who I think is one of the most underrated coaches in NFL history. I mean, they were just, they scored a lot of points. They beat a very good Dallas Cowboy team. They And, I mean, the thing that really impressed me about them was in the playoff run against Houston, they completely took apart Houston. Earl Campbell couldn't move the ball on them at all. They beat them 34-5, to I think it was, in a rainstorm. Yeah, that was definitely one of the best teams that's ever lived, no question. I and mean, you could, but you could almost put do a toss up between that seventy five and seventy eight team. So I, mean, I could see why you you struggled with which one you were going to pick. Man, I just went with the team with a little bit more offense. So, what's your five, Matt? Uh, my five is the eighty five Bears. For the longest time, I had them at uh, number one or two, and after doing a little bit more research. And maybe even after some of our conversations, I took a look, and you know, I still think they're one of the great teams. Like like Joe was saying, for one year, for that year, Jim McMahon was actually pretty good that year. Walter Payton, you said he was aging. Yeah, he was, but he led the league in rushing in a year that he oh, was supposed to be Dickerson. Right, and you know, and Payton also led the team in receiving. Now, yeah, Willie Galt and Dennis McKinnon were not fabulous receivers, but for that year, they were good, and they had threats on. Special teams, both Galt and Dennis Gentry ran back kicks for touchdowns. Uh, rookie Kevin Butler definitely improved their kicking game. And that front seven and the scheme they ran, they were just burying everybody. I mean, for, well, they're one game away from being undefeated. And, uh, you know, it's just one of the best teams I've ever seen. Well, real quick before we get to Joe's number five, we're getting close to the end of the live show, which is the bottom of the hour in a little over two minutes. Uh, top of the hour, you'll be able to get the rest of the show on archive time. Remember, Todd Stussy couldn't make it tonight because his draft app is actually dropping in the morning. Um, he will be here Monday night at 11 p.m. to talk to us. We'll go ahead and we'll review the draft app. We'll go from there. Joe, number five. Number five, I had the 76 Raiders. They were a complete team. I know you mentioned that you think you didn't think they ran the ball great, but they had a, a, a two-headed monster, if I remember correctly, right. Clarence Davis and uh, and uh, uh, Van Egan. They had a great offensive line. They had great receivers, one of the greatest tight ends who ever lived. Uh, and Stabler, at times, was a great quarterback. He could be inconsistent a little bit. That was a tremendous defense, very well coached. It was a complete team. They only lost once. Um, so uh, it was a dominating team. They're my number five. Uh, what's your number four, Matt? Or number four, Joe. We'll let Joe follow up. 72 right. Dolphins, hmm. undefeated. Uh, they, they, they lost Bob Greasy to a broken ankle, and Earl Morrill came in, and that team did not miss a beat. I've heard some criticisms that they had a bit of a soft schedule, but they had a great defense. And uh, that team had a lot of character, and hey, they're undefeated. Uh, they definitely. Uh, some people argue they should be number one. I don't think so, but uh, they're my number four team. 
How about you, Matt? Well, I'll, I'll uh, like to speak to the Dolphins as well. I struggled also with where where do I put the Dolphins because you know they you know they got there in '72 despite all the criticisms they went undefeated, but then they got back and won it again, and they were even in the Super Bowl the year before. Um, that said, I don't have them in my top ten, but it's really really close. I did, the guys that I put in my top five, or that, well, in the whole list, I just felt were just a little bit better. But, no, I, I respect what you say because they also had Paul Warfield and they had a three-headed rushing attack. So, yeah, I mean, I, I can understand why people definitely rank them. But my number four, I've got the 2004 New England Patriots. My opinion, the best uh, Tom Brady team. Uh, you had Corey Dillon, who left the, the Bengals for greener pastures to go out and get a ring. I know Mike loves that. but uh, <laughs> I don't know why you got to take shots at me all the time. <laughs> That's really rich. You know, you know the problem is this. I, I can make <laughs> snide comments about your team because your team won. So that just makes me the sad person that feels really bad. When you make comments as the team that dominates my team, then it makes you look like a bully, and nobody likes a bully, man. <laughs> Joe, you know how you, you can tell I'm I'm really like the bully type guy, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You, just just listening to you, I uh, you're like Mike Tyson, right? <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, you you had Corey Dillon, I believe, rushed for over 1,600 yards. Really gave the Patriots. And they were good in '03 and and even in '01. But now with Corey Dillon there, they were they really were a complete team, and uh, they still had the great defense. Brady. It didn't seem to matter who you put in there. Brady was. Guys got open. Troy Brown. It didn't really seem to matter who was in there, and uh, able to go and win uh, back-to-back titles. The last team to do it. And uh, so I, I, I'd put. I, got, I, I feel like I had to get a Brady team in there, and they're my pick. All righty. Um, I think you're nuts on that one, but I'll let that go. My number four is the '77 Super Bowl twelve Dallas Cowboys. I mean, you had Roger Stahl back at the top of his game. Tony Dorsett, as a rookie, rushed for just over 1,000 yards, but if I remember right, he didn't, they didn't even start him the first three or four games because Landry didn't like to start rookies. Um, defensively, I mean, their, their defensive line, I mean, Ed Tuchel Jones, Jethro Pugh, Randy White, I mean, they were loaded. Um, Harvey Martin. And the playoffs, huh? Yeah, Harvey Martin. Harvey Martin. Got Harvey Martin. I didn't forget it, but I had it written down, and my handwriting's so bad I couldn't tell what it was except for the M. So I just skipped over it so I didn't have to think too much. Um, but if you look at their playoff run, you beat the Bears 37-7 to with Walter Payton, you know, close to being in his prime. You come out and you beat Minnesota 23-6, to which I know they had Bob Lee at quarterback, and Bob Lee wasn't really a very good quarterback. I hate to say that because I know Bob listens in a lot, but <laughs> I had to say it, Bob. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, I mean, the Super Bowl, they played a really good Denver team and then dominated the game. I mean, Denver had a bunch of turnovers, kind of hung in. It was 20-10. to 10. They brought Norris Weiss in, and then Dallas shut them down. You had Tom Landry, who, like Chuck Noll, I think is a really underrated coach. But that's my number four. And... Matt, give us a number three. Number three, I'm going with the 1993 Dallas Cowboys. I was stuck between the 77 and the 93 team. I decided to go with uh, the 93 team. Uh, maybe the could, that could be the greatest offensive line that, that's ever uh, played as a single unit, uh, other than maybe the 76 Raiders. He had uh, Emmett Smith on the top of his game. Guy misses two games with a contract dispute, comes back and still leads the league in rushing. Troy Aikman was pretty much near flawless. Didn't put up a lot of points on the on the passing end, but you know, with Emmett Smith there, I mean, it, just, it was so balanced. Michael Irvin, Alvin Harper was darn near unstoppable. They said Jay Novacek. The defense, now the, now the 92 defense was number one in the league, but the 93 defense came out and actually was better in points allowed. You know, you know Leon Lett was becoming uh, a, a bigger part of the scheme. He was actually, despite his miscues, was pretty dominant many times. He had Charles Haley, Russell Merrill, and Ken Norton, really balanced attack, and then they go and 
beat up on uh, the Eagles, the Niners, and then the Buffalo Bills. And, you know, the Bills were playing them actually really tough in the Super Bowl. And then once uh, James Washington returned that fumble, that was it. But probably the best Dallas team of the 90s. One of the most complete teams I've ever seen. As much as I hated them, they were great. I enjoyed what they did to the 49ers in the early 90s myself. What do you think, Joe? (laughs) Of course you did. Well, um, you don't you don't have to tell me about that '93 Cowboy team that uh, separated shoulder game against the Giants still hurt, haunts me, and uh, that's another game for my games that still haunt me show. Um, my number three team are the '84 80, Niners. That was a phenomenal team that I hated. They also beat my Giants. Uh, that team uh, came within a hair of being totally undefeated. That was a that team had no weaknesses. Had a great defense, maybe the best defense of the uh, Joe Montana era with the Niners. That 84 defense was unbelievable. And offensively, you know, they beat a really good Dolphins team in the Super Bowl. They handled them easily. Uh, they beat a good Giants team. They they dominated a game. And as you remember, Matt, Harry Carson scored the Giants' only touchdown in that game. And <laughs> they right. shut out they shut out the Bears uh, in the championship game, one of the hardest-hitting games I've ever seen. That uh, was a great team. All right. Um, my number three is the Super Bowl Seven Miami Dolphins. I think it would be almost criminal for anybody to leave them out of it. They were undefeated. People talk about a soft schedule, which they had a soft schedule. They played two – the two best teams they played in the regular season were both eight and six teams that didn't make the playoffs. What people forget is they go to the playoffs. They play the Cleveland Browns, who are the wild card at 10-4. and four. They beat them. They go to Pittsburgh and beat a Pittsburgh team that was, I believe, 11-3. and And then they go to the Super Bowl and they beat another 11-3 and team in the Washington Redskins. They were underdogs in the Pittsburgh and Washington games. And I think a lot of people forget that. I mean, because I know that I used to get caught up with that. The older schedule was terrible. But if you look at the three wins they had to have at the end of the season – I mean, I think it wipes out whatever happened in a regular season anyways, plus the fact that to go through 14 NFL games and in three playoff games and not lose a game, I think you have to have them up there. They also beat the Steelers in Pittsburgh, and they were losing that game. Yeah, they won 21-17. Wasn't that the game where Morrill started the game and then they had to bring Greasy off the bench? And a uh, big turning point in that game is they hit Paul Warfield on a beautiful slant. It was uh, it's a gorgeous play. You can look it up. It's beautiful. Now, my number two is the Super Bowl 1949ers. I mean, one of the best teams I ever saw, obviously, because I got them at number two. Um, we're running short on time, though, so I probably don't need to go in about the 84 Niners because I think Matt already did that. Uh, but they were very dominant. <laughs> Won the NFC Championship game 23 to nothing over the Bears a year before the Bears were, you know, a top ten team in a lot of people's eyes that ever played in a Super Bowl. So I've, number two for me is the Super Bowl 19 San Francisco 49ers. What you got, Matt? Number two, I've got the 1978 Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, it's basically be, my number one and two are basically tied, um, but. I also chose the 78 Steelers. I felt like they had a little bit more on offense, like you said. Um, you know, they don't just have Randy Grossman. They also got Benny Cunningham. And, uh, you know, you still got Swan and Stallworth, the offensive line. Um, defense was uh, basically the same. Um, but, you know, they just – they were so good. That That's my pick for the best Steelers team. But it's it's obviously close. All right. Um, Joe? My number two team were the 92 Cowboys. That team was, uh, I couldn't stand them, but I could not deny their greatness. Uh, One of the great moments for me was when they were in San Francisco. I'm sorry, Matt, it's a bad memory. There are crowds against them. The crowds against them, they're on their own around five-yard line, and they called a perfect slant to Michael Harper that totally silenced the crowd. It was one of the great plays I've ever seen in a big spot. Alvin Harper, forgive me. Uh, one yeah, of the great plays I've seen in a big <laughs> spot. It was a uh, that was a great great team, and they beat a really good Bills team, and they totally wiped them out. All right, right. what's your number two, Joe? We'll just keep you going. That was number two, that Cowboys. My two. number one team. Oh, number Joe one. Rosley. What's your number one? Seventy-eight Steelers, flawless me. team. Seventy-eight Steelers uh, were a perfect team to me. It was the greatest team I ever saw. They they had 
Uh, they could run the ball. They could pass the ball. They had a great quarterback. They had a great defense. They had a great coach. They had every, uh, the, the only thing that team didn't have was a kicker. Roy Jarella was horrendous. Yeah, he was bad. Well, Matt, what's your number one? My number one is the 84 Niners, but it's, you know, it's Oh, my God. Really? Why does everything with you have to be number one for the 49ers? Every time well, I had to do that for you, Mike, it would Number one was a 49 Go ahead. You know, I have to do it for Mike because it just, he just loves it so much. But that the, the entire secondary uh, went to the Pro Bowl that year. I think a lot of people forget that. All four guys. It was the most complete team I ever saw. Um, three points away from being undefeated. Uh, but, you know, it looks like all of us basically agree. The Cowboys of the 90s, the 78 Steelers, and the 84 49ers are the top three teams of all time. So it's <laughs> pretty close. Don't speak three. for me. I haven't given my number one yet. Well, I'm going based on past conversations. But you know what? You're going to surprise me again. <laughs> Why do you do the that? The 2005 you know Bengals. 2005 <laughs> Bengals, right? Uh, beat the 2005 San Francisco 49ers. Okay. <laughs> All right, my number one are the 1992 Dallas Cowboys. I don't even think it's close because I think they were a team. They also had a kicker, which puts them ahead of that Steeler team. But uh, they were only the third defense since 1980 to hold opponents to fewer to 14 or 4,000 yards in a 16-game season. The only other two to do it were the 84 Bears, 91 Eagles. I mean, their defense was ranked number one in fewest yards allowed. Their defense finished first in total defense. The secondary, which a lot of people forget about, which I mean, they finished fifth in pass defense in the entire NFL. You know, they led the NFL in defense against the rush, fewest first downs allowed. I mean, that, they were just perfect defensively. They were fast. They were young. If you remember, they were the youngest team in the NFL at that point. Yeah, that was actually you know, very scary in, for me. <laughs> and they Joe. They said in NFL. <laughs> They set an NFL record by holding the Seahawks to 62 yards in a game, and they held the Chicago Bears to fewer than 100 yards in a game. And Super Bowl 27, I think, really summed them up. They score 52. They give up 17, but they caused the Super Bowl record nine turnovers. I think it was like five fumbles, four interceptions, yeah. or vice versa. And they scored two defensive, two defensive touchdowns. You know, and four Curry, of their starters Curry. were rookies or second-year players. Yeah, that team made me sick. Yeah, I and it, they had it, it the greatest like offensive line agree. in NFL history. Yeah, well, the top two or three, three like we, we all agree, agree on basically just different order. Right, right. But so you know, if we have a I minute, guess, if we have a minute, maybe we could talk about the uh, 1990 and 2011 NFC Championship games. Well, well, sure. Fine. How about the old? That's good. You know, old I want to talk about the 81 Bills Bengals playoff game. <laughs> but all right, so we all agree that that's our top ten. Everybody had a number one, and I won the argument. So now we'll go ahead and talk about what we're going to do next. Actually, week. <laughs> ten guys just tweeted and said, "Mike, you that you you lost." Well, see, you're making it up because you only got like twelve followers on Twitter. I got ten thousand, so they, somebody could tweet me something. All right. So. <laughs> that's my dummy account. <laughs> that's your dummy account. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we got to wrap it up. We got like two minutes left. I want to thank Joe and Matt. It was a good time. It was the conversations we usually have when nobody's listening. Hopefully, somebody's yeah. out there listening. And it looks like, from looking at the board, there are people listening. So, um, Joe's my co host for the boxing show, which we will have former light heavyweight champion of the world, Donnie Lalonde, next Tuesday night. I know Joe's excited about that. Absolutely. Okay. Of a fighter, and, uh, and he's also had an interesting life, too. Yeah, Teddy Atlas. And uh, among other things. Yeah, fought Sugar Ray Leonard. Great fight. Um, next Wednesday night, me and Matt, will, or Matt and I, will have Gerald Riggs, former three time Pro Bowl running back from the Atlanta, from the Atlanta Falcons. One and of the best backs Monday night. In the 80s. He was. He was really good. And he was great with the Redskins. His last game he ever played was Super Bowl twenty six where he scored two touchdowns. So not much better way you can end a career. And then Monday night, yeah. Todd Stucy's draft app will be here at eleven o'clock all of those nights. We will have a show probably Thursday night also. 
Don't know if we'll get if we have, we'll have a guest or if we're gonna have a top ten where a San Francisco 49er team or player ends up at number one. So okay, get any closing words? Find to play nowhere on the list. <laughs> okay, they, you know what? I can hit mute. That's the beauty of being in the studio. Okay. <laughs> So all I got to do is push mute, then you can't talk, and then we'll make fun of you for the last two minutes. But do you have any final words, Joe? (laughs) No, I really enjoyed it. Matt and Mike, thanks very much. This was a great conversation. Yep. Joe, good to meet you. Joe, and we'll talk to you Tuesday night with Donnie Lalonde. Looking forward to it. Oh, Matt, any final words? Yeah. Uh, Really enjoyed it. Good good to meet Joe. Uh, Fun conversation, and uh, uh, always a good time. Well, once again, Monday night, 11 o'clock Eastern Time, Todd Stusey. 